British Columbia is under a state of emergency as wildfires continue to grow. And temperatures are busting records on a regular basis. Escaping the flames with moments to spare. Dramatic scenes from Lytton, British Columbia earlier this week. Physically stressed by the drought that's hitting much of the West. The southern interior and the southeast are seeing the highest level of drought in years. The blue sky over Merritt, B.C. has been obscured by shades of red and black. The flames and smoke of a monster fire more than 60,000 hectares in size and growing is now threatening the city. A minute by minute, hundreds of thousands of dollars could be just evaporating into the sky. On the, on the dry riverbed, you've got hundreds of little fish dead. Scientists have little doubt climate change is playing a role. Why are the fish not coming back? The naysayers say that you will not turn this problem around. You're wasting money building these fish habitat structures. Your habitat restoration is not worth the trouble. It's all coming to fruition. The, the flooding, the fires. We don't have steelhead in the upper North Thompson anymore. Why is it not producing many, many fish? The way that the environment is reacting to this and, and streams are reacting. Climate change is a huge thing. That's going to negatively affect salmon populations in the province. It blew bridges out that were engineered way beyond our standards to the standard of public safety. Impacts of people and expansion and use of other resources that do impact you know, salmon. We accelerate the impact to these remaining fish stocks if we can't make some kind of adjustment in our behavior. This generation of kids that we're in now may never experience traditional fishing. Only if we look at all of the habitat needs of salmon from all of the province are we going to find a solution that works for everybody. You know, the creation story talks about how um, when the creator is making man, he gave, the salmon gave their voice. So that's why I always see the salmon going like that. Well, there are all kinds of charts showing declining fish population abundance, and they're very graphic. Uh, and this has been going on for decades and decades. The loss of fish populations is related to a number of things. One key factor, only one of the key factors, is declining natal stream habitat. Natal stream are basically the nursery grounds for Pacific salmon in the interior of BC. And there are many, many streams with many small rivulets that collectively add up to a huge amount of habitat. And though there may only be a few hundred fish in each small stream, they add up to the large coastal runs that the commercial fishing industry relies on to harvest from. So the interior produces a lot of fish to the coast. Of course, not all of them, but there's a lot of value in the interior streams in terms of fish that are produced down to the coast. Uh, there are other factors as well. So not to say natal stream habitat's the only issue, but it's definitely a big one. If there's no quality remaining in the natal stream habitat and the egg to fry survival rates are low amongst the few fish that do get back here, it's a guaranteed outcome that these fish populations are not going to recover well. So I think one of the really outstanding things is we've known that fish population declines are going on for a long, long time. It's not a secret. We've been working to try and undo some of the impacts of uh, you know, human-related development that has sort of contributed to the declining quality of these fish habitats scattered throughout these interior streams. But now, more than anything else, you don't need to see any numbers, just look at the news. Here are symptoms that are undeniable of climate change impacting stream runoff events. We just had a rain on snow event that we always worry about in the spring, in the fall. That's a new one. losing their homes, losing everything that they know and love. Uh, it's just crazy. It blew bridges out that were engineered way beyond our standards to the standard of public safety, which is built to a much higher standard than fish habitat is usually built to, and even those structures didn't stand a chance. They blew out overnight. Both routes north on the Coquihalla and west on Highway 7 completely blocked. Some people have been hoarding goods and supplies. So we've got a lot of symptoms showing up of climate change that are exacerbating the problem we already had with declining salmon stocks. And it's going to really accelerate the impact to these remaining fish stocks if we can't make some kind of 
adjustment in our behavior to help mitigate those climate change impacts. Thank you.